After about four years of a self-imposed acting hiatus, Nollywood screen delight on Motola Jelade Akendi makes an appearance in the new movie Alter Ego. The lead cast and crew of the movie, which is set to make a box office entrance, hosted a special screening for critics in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Um, so Motola joined the producers and other crew members for a meet and greet after the screen, and there she explains her reason for taking a four-year break from acting. I knew I was going to be going on the break, so I did a few movies. Um, by sheer luck, whether good luck or bad luck, I don't know which one, they didn't come out. So I have like four movies that are still not out. I don't know, some of you might, might have heard about Upgrade, Tarila movies, uh, Tarila's movie. It's still not out. Um, I did one with uh, Teko Benson. Um, what was that one? Yeah, thank you, in the lagoon, the uh, on. Yeah, blood on the lagoon in the lagoon. That's not out. I did another movie in um, London called Amina. Yeah? Oh yeah, fine, thank you. <laughs> so that's not out as well. So I I, I I plan really, that's the way I, I try to do my life. I plan. And I knew I needed to um, go away because I was getting creatively stifled. You know, in, in the creative field you get to a point sometimes and you feel like there's no there's nothing challenging you anymore and then you start to feel like you're dropping, your standard is dropping. So I went through that period and I knew I needed to stay away and wait for the industry to catch up with some of our ideas. And I knew that cinema was the next way uh, from Egypt. And so coming back was hard for me because I was looking for that movie um, that would challenge me. Like I said earlier, I was looking for something um, in the strength or better than modern inheritance. I knew I had to reset. Can you, can you relate to that? I knew I had to reset. So I was looking for something that would excite me the same way modern inheritance excited me and something that would bring that kind of value um, in message, in entertainment, in reality, you know, something of that nature. And I got a lot of scripts, and none of them, except I just wanted to pay for money, which at that point I had moved past that, that, uh, that reason. Um, so I knew it had to strictly be for excitement. I had to find something that would make me feel that way again. And the truth of the matter is, all time ago did it for me. Right. Two months ago, a 14-year-old girl was found at the chief's residence. It was alleged that she was raped several times over the course of three days. Alter Ego focuses on the post-traumatic stress suffered by a victim of child sexual molestation. I don't want to talk about it! I think he's dead. But I was caught loose today. But what did you call the name of that church again? Holy Life Ministries. <laughs> A woman who has put herself in the forefront of giving justice. Madame. Over the years, Omotola had lent her image, name and voice to fight many female courts in Africa. Ending her self-imposed holiday for the movie came because of a personal strong conviction about the message. But I think that this is the first movie that is truly addressing the problem of PTSD. Um, That's the post-traumatic stress disorder. We don't talk about that in Nigeria. We're ready, we're in jail. That's what they say, right? So when you see someone who is mentally traumatized, the first thing that comes to your mind is, this person is crazy. Um, so we don't talk about depression in Nigeria. We don't talk about how it affects children, especially children that, are, uh, that have been abused. Um, when you ask a lot of adults, even some people in this room here, you might find out that some people have been abused as children. And if you want to tell yourself the truth, how many of us were actually able to talk to our parents about this? In Africa, it's almost a taboo for you to say, Uncle, somebody touched me. You know what I mean? To say, Uncle, somebody touched me. They will practically ask you one million questions. Well, what were you wearing? What did you say to him? Where were you sitting? How were you sitting? Did you sit on his lap? I said, it's your fault. So you become the victim. So the problem here is that we want to start to address this, not only at that stage as how it affects children um, psychologically at that age, but even as adults. Sometimes you see people as adults behave in a certain way, but because we have not diagnosed this problem, because in Africa, you are either just crazy and you should go to Arrow, Yaba left, but we don't think about the fact that people actually have psychological trauma and that PTSD actually affects Africans. We think it's an Oibo disease.
The movie is woven around a young, successful woman who suffers a multiple personality disorder, which sees her act in a queer and vulnerable manner around men. To portray the character, the mother of four had to play in some extremely ranchy scenes. She addresses the controversy that the scenes have generated. Why you, you, your mind works the way it works? Look, I told you that creating alter egos is escapism, doesn't work, not medical. <laughs> But uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm successful. Yes, that's one one of the personalities you created. The other personality, Roxa, is going about doing all kinds of things. Oh, I don't feel anything for them. I hate them all. I hate. Them. I <sighs> want you. I want you. It wasn't going to work. Of course, I'm married and, and, and all of that. So, but I, I I won't do that if it's not necessary. And if, you, if some of you remember, I said something when my son was having his birthday, and I said. Um, this is a movie that my fans will either hate me or, or love me for it. Remember, I said that statement because I knew at that point that we're doing something quite risky as well. But I knew that it was necessary for this movie. So is it necessary for that movie? And then secondly, there are ways to do a sex scene that actually is tasty. You know, um, so there are times where you see a sex scene done. My own is if we can't do it well and convincingly. And my husband knows that. I tell my husband, I say, you know, child, you married an actor. Um, one and number two, <laughs> and number two, um, he's my very big fan, and I'm like, do you want me to be great or do you want me to just be good? Like I want it to be the greatest, not even great. I say, hey, hey the Google love, <laughs> and he's fine with that. He understands it, but uh, just like every other human being, and like um, um, the professional that he is, he too wants to be convinced that you did it because it was um, necessary. And I know that when he's watching movies, sometimes he too will say, oh, did they have to kiss if they were not going to kiss well? You know, so I think those are the two things to watch out for. One, is it necessary? And if it is, it is necessary. The director believes it's necessary. The actor believes it's necessary. Except they're not professional. They know it's necessary for the movie. They should do it properly. And there are professional ways to do it. You don't even have to chop somebody's mouth if you don't want to. If it's not, yeah. If it's if the scene is not about you showing real mad, crazy love, which you can't now um, not show. You know, the mouth to mouth, the kissing, the maybe the removing of clothes or whatever. But um, there are some other ways you can do it. There are ways you can cheat for camera. I can kiss this chick right now. And you know, camera, they say camera can take shots from different angles. And it depends on what I shoot. That's what you'll see. So there's a way you would position the camera that, you know, you would, the viewers would be convinced that they were actually kissing. Creating multiple personalities is not a way to deal with pain. Fighting. I keep fighting. I keep fighting. I keep fighting.